asbestos. Want to know more about it? Well, watch this video. So how's it going? It's your fav favorite realtor ever seen Chihuahua with Keller Williams from Landmark, and we have a special guest today. Introduce yourself. My name is Bridget, and I'm with the Inspection Boys. Thank you for having us today. Thank you for agreeing to do this. All right, today's subject is about asbestos. Tell us all the stuff that we need to know as a buyer or a seller. Well, first off, don't freak out when you see it at a home inspection. Asbestos is a very common building material. It's actually, to be quite honest, it's an incredible material. Um, asbestos isn't dangerous as long as it's not friable. And I think that's really important. What does friable mean for the, for the average person? So pretty much friable means something that can be turned into a powder, right? Okay. If it's flaking or if you hold it in your hand, if it starts getting powdery, that's when asbestos can become dangerous. Um, and the reason why asbestos can become dangerous is that it is known to cause lung cancer or mesothelioma. You see, you, you know, all those big lawyer commercials you see on TV, if you've been exposed to asbestos and so forth, um, th those are some of the harms that asbestos can do, but it doesn't happen just by touching it one time. It actually happens over a long period of time. Um, so typically, um, asbestos, the reason why asbestos is a great material is because it's actually great at, uh, pr uh, with water, right? It's, it's considered, um, what is it called water resistant, a uh, fire retardant. Okay. So like firefighters, all their suits that they wear actually has asbestos material, asbestos fibers built into it because it helps make things, you know, like fire blankets and things like that. It helps make things fire resistant. So it's a great material. Um, that's why they used it back in the day so much. And I think one big thing for people to know, it is not illegal. That's, it, it's not illegal. You know, they they do have to, um, they, the government has changed certain laws and stipulations in regards to it. Um, but pretty much all that means is after a certain date, which I could not tell you the date in front of me right now, but after a certain date, the government said, okay, you can't make any new building materials with asbestos, but okay. anything that it was made with before can continue to be made with it. Right. Um, and like you mentioned in the earlier video, basically a lot of the homes basically in Long Island, Queens, Brooklyn, throughout New York, pretty much everywhere, already has some of this stuff in the house, basically. And like you said, it's not dangerous unless it's breakable and it's in the air, which exactly. the majority of these things are usually kept in, in good condition. If there is a situation where they need to take, like, let's say some parts are broken or stuff stuff is loose, like they might be in the tile or in you know the pipe work, stuff like that. How how would you handle getting rid of that? So pretty much, you have a few different ways. It really depends on what you're about to do, right? So if you're about to do major renovations, right, to a, a house, and there is different areas that may contain asbestos, you have to get an asbestos inspection. And what that's going to do is an inspector, such as the inspection boys or any other company you choose, is going to come out and they're going to take samples. Now, asbestos testing, just so everybody knows, it is not like a mold inspection, right? Mold, mm -hmm. you just have to, uh, you take air samples or you swab something. Asbestos does cause damage to whatever material that you're, you're about to inspect. So literally, if you're inspecting like drywall, you have to actually have to cut a small area out of the wall for the drywall. So a little square. Okay. Yes. Exactly. And same thing with the tile, basically you cut out the tile, whether exactly. it's on the floor. Or, okay. Exactly. So that's why it's not really too common for people to do it during the home inspection process because they typically don't own the house yet. And they don't, you know, most of the time the sellers don't allow them to do that type of inspection. However, we've had it where, you know, if the customer is about to do renovations, they hire us and the seller will let us you know, do the inspection in non-discreet, you know, like discreet, not non-discreet, but in discreet areas okay. of the house where the damage won't be so visible. Okay. Uh, so that's how the sampling process, you know, takes place. Um, then it gets sent out to a lab and then the lab is going to then do different types of sampling to see like, okay, how much percentage of asbestos is in there. So pretty much the rule of thumb is uh, materials can have uh, less than 1% of asbestos. So if it has 1%, it's not really considered a major thing. But if it has more than 1%, then that's where you have to um, get rid of the asbestos in a deemable way, which is pretty much you have to bag it a certain way and it has to go to a specific type of dump. As well. All right, I, I have two questions for you. Tell What's me. the time frame basically from after you get the samples to when it gets to the lab 
and then when you get the results. That's question number one. And so, then question number two is after you get the results and whatnot and you want to get rid of whatever the, the stuff is. So, so quite first question. So the lab fees, I think that's probably the biggest and most expensive part of asbestos inspection, right? Um, so you can get the asbestos results. There's a lab here that we use locally uh, right here in Long Island in Nassau County. Um, we could get the results same day, but that comes out of upcharge. So okay. typically um, I, we find that people are okay with anywhere between a 72 hour to a 96 hour turnaround because it's not, it's not breaking the bank. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, if you're really makes... if you're really in a rush, you can get the results the same day, but it just comes at an upcharge. Okay. And then after you get the results, how long does it take? Uh, for the, the report? News? Yeah, for the report. The report goes out as soon as we get the results, we send out the report same day. Okay. So, um, you know, typically we actually already have the report ready. Uh, we're just waiting on the results and then we link up the results with the report. Okay. So everything is done electronically? Yes, everything's electronically and send out via email and you get it. So we try to make it as nice and easy as possible. All right, great. So now that they got this and let's say they're doing a renovation and there is some asbestos and they need to get rid of it. What do you recommend? How do they get rid of the asbestos? So typically, if you have a contractor who is experienced and knows what they're doing, um, depending on which town and municipality you're working with, the town may mandate, especially depending on the type of renovations you're going to do, um, definitely, uh, usually when you're demolishing a house, they always want a asbestos inspection. Um, so contractors will go about it different ways. Some of them will always just handle everything as asbestos material and okay. just, you know, demolish it the way, you know, like get rid of the materials and put it in the certain dumps as needed. Other contractors are going to upcharge uh, their services for that because it costs more to get rid of asbestos. So that's, yeah. that's the biggest thing. Um, so it just depends on who you're working with. Now, technically, as a homeowner, a homeowner is able to, if they have asbestos on a, uh, let's just say, because um, asbestos is great at retaining heat as well, but that, that's why it's always on like heating pipes, like you'll notice okay. near the boilers and things yeah. like that. Technically, homeowners are able to and legally able to remove it themselves. Right. So if a homeowner does that, just make sure you wear a mask and, you know, put it in a bag and, you know, dispose of it properly. But um, that's one way that uh, customers can save some money if they actually remove it themselves. I've heard basically like if they have it in a room, let's say like it's in the basement and they have basement towel that you're trying to get rid of or uh, ceiling, ceiling fixtures and whatnot, they can try to get rid of that. They seal off the room that they're in. They wear the protective gear. They wear their masks. They wear the protective gear and they, take the, the material that they take, get rid of, they put it in another bag and they collect all the, all the samples, put them all in their bag and they get rid of it. You know, obviously they're going to double bag or triple bag, discard, discard the, uh, the items. Are there any other ways that they should be handling this material? So again, it all comes down to how friable the material is. Mm -hmm. So pretty much the more dusty the material can become once it's moved and, you know, damage is going to determine what uh, the abatement company goes by, right? So you have a asbestos inspector, which would be us. We come out, we take the samples, we provide a report, and then you, that information you give to the abatement company, and then they come up with a remediation plan. So depending on how friable things are is what they're going to, you know, how, how, you know, how much they're going to, I guess if you want to call it, um, close off the room or wherever the asbestos is being worked on and so forth. Um, if it's massive renovations, they usually don't do things like that. They just go in with a, uh, you know, mask and they just put it everything in bags. So it depends on the type of renovations okay. that you're doing. It sounds either direction you're going, you should hire a professional. Yeah. <laughs> And they'll, they'll best guide you basically which, which route to go. Exactly. Right. But I think it's important that, I think that's why I'm so happy you mentioned this today um, because asbestos shouldn't be such a scary subject as long as you're educated on it. Um, you know, if you have it in your house, um, unless you're planning on doing some type of work with it, leave it be if it's in good condition. That's my okay. rule of thumb. There you go. And like we said before, this is a common thing that happens in a lot of houses. It's already there. It's the only Danger is basically when you said if it's friable, exactly. if it's loose, and that's as long as you don't disturb 
the the situation where it is, like you said, leave it alone. It should be fine. Exactly. But this, is a, this is a common thing. Well, it's a natural material. It's actually made in, you know, it's mined and there's asbestos mines out there and it comes naturally from the earth. Um, so um, as long as it's in good condition, it's not friable, you know, leave it be. Um, unless you're trying to do renovations then hire a professional. Definitely. That's the key thing. Always hire a professional to get the work done. Because you as a novice might not know what you're doing, might cause more harm than good. Hire a professional. Exactly. All right. Now, besides asbestos, what else, what other home inspection things do you do? So we are licensed home inspectors for the state of New York. So we do home inspections. Pretty much we can technically do the entire state, but we cover all of Long Island, New York City, and Westchester. Uh, we're also licensed mold assessors as well. So if you need a mold inspection, we're here to help as well. Uh, we do water quality, radon inspections. We do so much. Like we're pretty much one-stop shop and here to help you and your clients as much as possible. All right, I'm getting a buzz right now. It's a question that somebody's asking me. What about roofs? Do you climb up on roofs? Depends. So that's one of those things that everybody always asks, well, will you climb up on my roof? It depends, right? So home inspectors, we all have to be safe and we all carry like every company, you know, that's out there, if they're, if they're a good company, they have to have certain type of insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Especially bigger companies, we have to have workers comp insurance. So depending on the slant of the roof, how steep it is, it, the general condition is going to determine what roofs we walk on and what roofs we don't. No matter mm -hmm. what, the roof is going to get inspected. If we can't walk on the roof, we carry poles that go up to 30 feet high and we, you know, get all the roof information. And if for whatever reason we can't inspect the roof, then no other company is going to be able to inspect it because that would mean that the roof is really, really high, which we have never really experienced that before. All right. Could you give your information one more time, just in case if anybody's interested and they want more information, how, how, how can they reach you? Absolutely. So our phone number is, well, let me grab it because we have like a billion phone numbers. <laughs> uh, our main number is 516-591-3262. Our email is nassau at theinspectionboys.com. And our website is nassau.theinspectionboys.com. So we're here to help you with whatever you need from Long Island to New York City and Westchester. All right. Now, besides residential, what else do you do? We do commercial as well. All right. So commercials, it's priced very differently, but if you're looking to buy a commercial property, we do commercial inspections as well. And we really encourage those as well, uh, because just like residential, you're investing a lot of money in a commercial building. You want to know what you're about to put your money, you know, invest your money in. So we do commercial inspections too. All right. So turnaround time, basically, they get the appointment today. We do the, the inspection today. How soon can they get the report? So typically, we guarantee the report within 24 hours. If you really need it same day, just let the inspector know, and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll pretty much prioritize as needed. Uh, but we guarantee at the latest 24 hours. All right. Another question. What social media are you on? We're on everything. Oh my gosh, I couldn't. <laughs> We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Although I won't lie, I really don't check LinkedIn as much. I get super annoyed with it for whatever reason. What about TikTok? No. Okay. So no, not TikTok. I guess not yet. I, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I don't know. If, like I see all these people like super brave, like mimicking these videos. I don't know if I'm just capable of being that outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much, Richard, for doing this. Um, Again, your contact information in case anybody missed it the first couple of times that we mentioned it. How can I reach you? Phone number 516-591-3262. Email uh, nassau at theinspectionboys.com or nassau.theinspectionboys.com uh, for our website. You can call or text us 516-591-3262. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Again, this is Evan St. Draw with Keller Williams Realty Landmark. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, click, and share. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, we'll have more videos like this. If you have any more information that you want to know about real estate, whether it's buying, selling, or investing in real estate, feel free to give your favorite realtor a call. You can reach me at my cell phone, 917-975-5985. See ya. See ya, everyone.